Jim here from Remick Museum and Farm, and I am over here at the gardens because it is a, the International Monarch Butterfly Bio Blitz, a citizen science project to see if we can uh, count as many parts of the monarch butterfly's life cycle as we can. Uh, just during this week, so I'm doing it on today, uh, Sunday. And uh, if you're not familiar with citizen science, it's a great uh, process. There's all kinds of different organizations and programs that are doing citizen science programs. And essentially what it is, is uh, a group of people getting together and making observations and then recording that data and submitting it. Often this is done through apps on cell phones or over the internet or you can sometimes file it away uh, by paper, uh, but there's a lot of great apps and things that do help do this. Um, but you're helping make all these observations and it really helps to widen the amount of these observations that can be done. There's only so many science scientists that are studying things. And now with cell phones, with wonderful cameras and wireless internet, uh, we can often make observations that really help scientists studying a certain uh, a certain thing out in the field. And so now we're trying to monitor how monarch butterflies are doing. So uh, around the world, people are counting them in their spots, taking pictures and submitting that data. So let's see what our monarch situation here is at the farm. So first up is finding our milkweed, and this is an important plant for lots of different insects, not just the monarchs. Uh, here we have some in with some flowers, and we want to make sure that we plant this in careful places. It can actually be poisonous to livestock and humans if eaten, um, so we only want it in certain spots. And here you can see the pods, which we actually remove. That way we can plant where we want it and keep it out of the fields. Um, Milkweed is super important, um, but it can take over a little bit. It can be a little bit weedy. So we take careful um, care in where we're putting it because it is important, but it also can be problematic on the farm. And you can see here uh, why it's called milkweed. Uh, some of the sap on the inside is very thick. First thing we're looking for are eggs, and these are kind of difficult. They are very small, they're singular, and they kind of look like little hats to me. And unfortunately, you are also, or fortunately, however you look at it, you're going to find a bunch of different types of eggs too. And these are not monarchs like that first picture, um, but they are still important and very cool to find. Now, what you're also going to see, hopefully, is some evidence. And this will help you find our next stage, which is going to be our larval stage. Of course, we had the egg. That first picture, first uh, video was the monarch. And now we're seeing some leaves being eaten. This is frass or waste from our larval stage. And that and that caterpillar and moth is a caterpillar. And here's a very tiny uh, early instar of a monarch. You can see the coloration. Here's a better older uh, caterpillar, that yellow, white, and black stripes. Now, other caterpillars are going to be found on milkweed as well. And this is a fun find. These are tussock moth caterpillars, still that familiar orange, white, and black color. This actually indicates that they are poisonous to uh, predators. That poison that can be bad for livestock, these insects can eat and it, they actually use it for poison. Now this might be the hardest stage to find. This is the chrysalis of a monarch and I was unable to find one, but here's a great picture. Um, next up, easier to find, but maybe a little bit harder to video record, was the adult stage. And here's a really cool, uh, a little bit of a video here. I was able to capture the monarch really darting and dashing around and flying everywhere. Hard to sneak up on and get a good video of, but I did record a few adult butterflies flying around, which is a great sign for uh, our monarchs in our gardens. Now, the monarch butterfly, while awesome, while in trouble, and a lot of us grow uh, milkweed so that we can help out is not the only thing we're going to find. Here is a swamp milkweed beetle, uh, which is also found on common milkweed. Not going to be a major problem. It does eat the leaves, 
of the milkweed, but they're not going to be so numerous that it causes issue. Uh, we've also got some milkweed bugs here. They tend to drink uh, from the stems and eat the seeds, uh, which is Again, not too problematic. Here's a, a different beetle that also eats the leaves. And all of these are natural parts of the ecosystem. We want these all to be here in balance here. It's just a, a, a stink bug that's hanging out in the leaves there. And again, another video of that really cool swamp milkweed beetle. And again, all these different types of uh, insect are going to use the, the milkweed are important for the ecosystem. So between Kaylee and myself, we were able to find two adult monarch butterflies. We found six larvae, which are the caterpillars, and we found ten eggs. Unfortunately, no chrysalises yet, um, but I think we're a little bit early in the season, just based off the size of the caterpillars we're finding and that kind of ratio of more eggs and then caterpillars. So we'll have to keep our eyes open for our own observations, but this will be the data that we're submitting for the Monarch Blitz. And that uh, also concludes our video for the week regarding uh, just monarchs, their life cycle, uh, the milkweed, which is their primary food as larva, and all the other cool things about milkweed and the things that use it as well. So again, if you liked our video, make sure you like and subscribe on YouTube. And if you're following along on Facebook, you can give us a like and share with friends if you think this is something they would enjoy as well. And I will see you again real soon. Uh, take care and bye.